Looking for a certain color fish to spice up your aquarium? Keep watching as I start a new series covering my favorite fish in every color of the rainbow, starting with red. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips on nano fish and planted aquariums. And you may remember in the past, I have a video on four different ideas for a 20 gallon aquarium. And I kind of inserted in there a really bad idea. I once had as a beginner to do a rainbow tank where I had one fish of different species that were all different colors. That's generally a bad idea just because a lot of nano fish are schooling fish. And so they like to be in big groups, not all by themselves. However, I still have that research spreadsheet where I categorized many different nano fish of different color buckets. So I decided I wanted to share that information with you in case you're looking for that one specific color that will really stand out or complete your aquarium. While this list is in no particular order, of course I have to start off with my dwarf red coral platys. There are many varieties of red colored platys like the red wag, the red mickey mouse platy, but I chose the dwarf version because they only get to one to one and a half inches long, which is perfect for a smaller aquarium. I love that that solid red orange color stands out so well in front of the greenery of my planted aquarium and the females are just as colorful as the males. I love how energetic and interactive they are. Every time I get near the tank, they always run up to me, greet me looking for food. So that is something to be aware of. They might outcompete some slower species in your aquarium. They swim at all levels, I would say, not just at the surface looking for food, but also down at the substrate. They do like harder water, which is one area I ran into a little trouble with the parents being raised originally in brackish water. So I did have to use a lot of Seachem Equilibrium to raise the hardness of my soft water. However, afterwards their fry were raised in fresh water and they did fine. As a live bearer, they do give birth to live young, but I'm not really worried about a population explosion in this community tank just because the adults are most likely going to eat most of the young, so it's probably not going to be an issue. Great fish, super easy to take care of, and a great breeding for profit project if you're interested because they're so colorful and they stay on the small side. Favorite fish number two is the cherry barb. Unlike a lot of other barbs that are kind of more aggressive, these are relatively peaceful and can actually live in a community tank. They only grow to about two inches long with the males being that bright red color and the females more of a tannish red, but they all have this brownish marking on them that kind of shows off the shape of their scales. I don't know why, I like it when you can see the scales on certain fish and they look like they're wearing armor. There are several other varieties besides the normal type. There's like longfin, albino, and then this is a schooling fish, so you'll want to get at least six or more. They can live in a wide range of temperatures, all the way from 68 degrees Fahrenheit to 81. So you don't even need to have them in a heated aquarium and you can even keep them outside probably during the summer in a mini pond. Now, no list about red aquarium fish would be complete without red cherry shrimp. Yes, yes, I know it's technically an invertebrate, but you can't go without these adorable dwarf shrimp. They're very, very popular in the planted aquarium world, again, because that red shows up so well in front of green leaves. They're scavengers, they'll help clean up after things, they'll eat some algae too. If you want a brighter red color, you want to purchase a higher grade red cherry shrimp. And then in general, the females tend to be brighter red and a little bigger versus the males are smaller and not as vibrant. One of my favorite things to do is to drop a piece of food in the aquarium and watch them just swarm over it like a horde of fire ants, but they're not gonna bite you, right? <laughs> it's just so cool. So since everybody wants these things, it's a very easy breeding for profit project. All you need to do is start with about 10 or 20 shrimp in a species only tank. So you don't want any other fish that would eat the babies. Get a gentle filter, like a sponge filter, so it won't suck up any fry. Are shrimp called fry? I don't know. I like to keep the temperature at 75 degrees just so that it's warm enough for them to breed, but also not so hot that their lifespan is gonna be shorter. Give them lots of good food, lots of minerals so that they can have healthy exoskeletons, and then boom, they will do all the work and soon you'll have lots and lots of babies to enjoy and to sell. If you want to learn more about how to keep and breed red cherry shrimp, definitely check out this series, the playlist over here for more information. 
My fourth recommendation is Epistogramma cockatoides, or the cockatoo red cichlid. It's a great starter episto. They come in many red varieties. There's double red, triple red, super red. It's more of a red-orange, I would say, on their fins and tail with this really high contrast markings or pattern on them. It kind of looks like fire in a way. Really, really cool. They mostly swim on the bottom levels of the aquarium, so feed them a wide variety of sinking foods that will be small enough to fit in their mouths. This is not a schooling fish for once on this list because they can get a bit territorial aggressive when they're breeding or raising up their fries. So in general, you may wanna just get like one male as your centerpiece fish for an aquarium, or if you plan on breeding them, get one male and anywhere from one to several females in a harem setting. It's pretty easy to sex them. The males are giant and colorful, about three inches long, versus the females are two inches, not as colorful. And then I'm really looking forward to breeding them because they are cave spawners. You put these little caves or coconut huts with a little hole on the front, the female goes in, and then they actually show parental care where she will guard the fertilized eggs and then guide the fry around so they can find all the best places to have food. Really cool. Coming in hot at number five on the list is the Chili Raspora. This is gonna be the smallest red nanofish on our list. Only about three quarters of an inch. And then it's very like thin and narrow in its body. So small bio load, you could probably keep some in a five gallon aquarium. The red body, unlike most of the other fish where they have kind of a warmer red, I've seen some pictures where it seems to have cool undertones in the red, which is kind of unique. And then it has that very striking black horizontal stripe with other black markings on it as well. Because of that tiny size, you're gonna want gentle flow, gentle filtration in that aquarium. Don't keep them with any tank mates that are on the larger side that would see them as a nice little snack. And then you wanna buy a group of at least six to eight in a school. Feed them tiny, tiny, tiny foods like crushed up flakes, micro pellets, frozen cyclops and daphnia, that kind of thing. For water parameters, they tend to prefer slightly acidic water, but there's a wide temperature range of 68 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And apparently they can be bred in captivity. So if you're looking for the challenge of raising up microscopic fry, give this one a shot. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite red nanofish is and whether or not you like the series. Do you want me to continue on to orange fish next? Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.